My name is Fergus Francie. I'm the commanding officer of the Coast Guard ship Hudson, which we are presently on board. And we're here to tell the story. During the life of Hudson, she has carried out numerous scientific missions for all science departments within the Canadian government. We've also assisted with other governments as part of the international science community. My name is Mark Ringuet. I'm a biologist at Oceanographic de Bedford. History of, of Hudson is really important within the scientific community, that's for sure. The very first part of the, of the Hudson's history that is, is really dear to my heart, it was one of the first oceanographic design ships that we had in Canada in the late 60s, early 70s. The Hudson was actually spearheading a fleet of, of vessels. We have done everything from hydrography to ocean chemistry, geophysics, hazard analysis, the list goes on. Quand Anne est plus du programme, le Hudson était évidemment la, la plateforme sur laquelle on a pu monitorer la mer du Labrador et tous les paramètres physico-chimiques et biologiques que ça implique et de regarder les connexions en fait avec l'atmosphère et le reste des océans du monde. Well, the big thing about Hudson, it does a lot of work with the AZMP program, which looks at changes within the ocean and the currents, temperatures, salinities, and chemical properties, to name a few of the things that they're constantly looking at. And it also helps us to determine if there is actually a change in the climate. We had the means to develop all sorts of projects. The, the 70 expedition is a really good example of that. And the ship uh, circumnavigate both Americas. And what I was able to do on that cruise is sample the plankton in the water from about the surface down to about 800 to 1,000 meters. All of the data collected all happened before the current warming. So what that will provide is that we have a database for what those oceans were like when we're in a cold climate versus a warmer climate. There was lots of, uh, of really, really groundbreaking and interesting scientific hypotheses. There was lots of other e experiments like that. They were using uh, magnetism to clearly define the form of, of Earth. But the application of that was to uh, satellite radar imagery. The, the idea was to build a knowledge of the form of the ocean so they could calibrate radar satellite imagery. Another thing that we've gone in and looked at is geohazards. There's been talk recently of tsunamis occurring because of underwater landslides. We get the scientists and they start mapping the ocean bottoms of areas of concern. In 2018, we were up in a place called Southwind Fjord up in Baffin Island. And what we were looking for was a recent landslide and just to see how it occurred and the manner it occurred and you get more of an appreciation of the changes that occur on a day-to-day -day basis. Canada is responsible for some of the largest areas of the world's oceans. Hudson, along with her other vessels, they were charting Canadian Arctic waters by doing hydrography. It'll serve the mariner for years to come and hopefully keep Canadian waterways safer. We're only tapping into what the ocean is all about. We're going to have to continue the collection of information and data. It also helps other countries if we provide them with the ongoing scientific information so everyone gets the big picture. We are the stewards of the Canadian Arctic. If there's a search and rescue, we have to assist those that are in trouble. We have to expand on the chart work. With global warming, there's ever more increase of international shipping up there because it is the shorter route. The environmental data that we are collecting are uh, now more and more incorporated into the, the fisheries model. They are used to forecast that we can harvest in the future. With the new ship, we're entering into a completely new world where we will be able to add uh, much more current technology. The possibilities will be uh, completely different, so that will help us going further, hopefully. It's always important for Canada to have a scientific vessel available to continue our commitment to Canada and its presence in the Arctic.
What I will miss about the ship is some of the people who will retire in between the two, the two vessels. I'm happy to participate in the ceremony, celebrating the past of that, uh, of that vessel who did so much for the scientific community. Here in the Canadian Coast Guard, it is important we honour the past so we can navigate the future. After a proud and storied career of 59 years, the Hudson's Watch has ended.